Very good. Good, good, good. So this is a New York Post article. The article reads, as you guys can probably see, Chief Justice Roberts orders probe into egregious leak of abortion draft. Chief Justice Roberts on Tuesday ordered an investigation into the unprecedented leak of a draft opinion suggesting the Supreme Court is poised to overturn the landmark 1973 Road v. Wade case. Okay, we're going to skip. Uh, that, that's useless information. Oh, yeah. Roberts slammed the leak as an egregious breach, breach of trust in the high court's first public comment since the draft opinion was published by Politico late Monday. Although the document, this is Roberts' words, the document described in yesterday's report is authentic. It does not represent a decision by the court or the final position of any member on the issues in the case. Roberts is saying that for a reason, my friends. <laughs> he's saying that because, well, actually, okay, it's foolish, actually, because he's correct. But he's not just saying it because he's correct. He's saying it because he's trying to tame fears. But the problem is this. Every single person who voted in the affirmative is a conservative justice. They are strong-willed. And they are probably going to stick by the decision. I don't see Barrett, Kavanaugh, Gorsuch, any of them caving on this. And so it is not a de jour certainty, but it's a de facto certainty. And it's quite peculiar to me. Well, it's not peculiar. I understand why he's saying it. It's just peculiar to me that if Roberts was thinking that this would calm things down, it won't. People know this is a de facto certainty. That's why you have Mayor Eric Adams saying that he's going to make sure that abortions are are well provided for in New York City. That's why you have Amazon now offering to give their employees stipends if they want to go out and get an abortion. That's why you have Gavin Newsom saying, fight like hell, and I'll make my state an abortion refuge house. That's why you have the, gov the, the governor of Connecticut saying that he's going to do so. That's why you have Tom Wolf Pennsylvania saying that he's going to make sure Pennsylvania is a safe heaven for abortions. That's why you have so many different governors and mayors and state officials and companies coming together to create the means to carry out an immoral act action because they understand it's a de facto reality. And for Roberts to just sit there and try to make it seem like it's not is disingenuous. He ought to have said, he ought to have said, yes, this is the likeliest outcome of the court. We will not bow to political pressure. And this and the sanctity of the institution shall be preserved and it will not fall to the mob. He should have said that. You should have said this is an impartial body that does not kowtow to either political side, and anyone who has a problem with that is fundamentally ignorant of the first principles of our republic. He should have said that, but instead he was like, well, this doesn't reflect like the final opinion. Yes, it does. I bet you everything in my bank account right now, which is not a lot, but I bet you that that opinion is going to be virtually identical to the one that they eventually release and finalize. This is the problem. Man, okay, let me not let me like this. Let's go on. He continues. To the extent this betrayal of the confidences of the court was intended to undermine the integrity of our operations, it will not succeed. The work of the court will not be affected in any way. Okay, again, you can't say that, that milk toast statement, when the antecedent to that statement was based in an attempt to pacify with misleading information. You can't mix oil and water. They don't go together. You either have a vial of order, a, a water or a vial of water. You don't mix them because when you do, problems happen. Bad things happen. If you mix them and you put them in a, in a, in a, in a, in a skillet, they'll explode. And we're about to see an explosion a furor and passion and unintelligible rhetorical platitudes into the political conversation like we've never seen before. We've already seen it. And I'm going to show you. We've already seen it. We've already seen it with Warren. We've already seen it with Sanders. We've already seen it with Chuck Schumer. We've already seen it. It's already happening. Kamala, I have this on my phone. Kamala just made a speech not too long ago at 7 p.m. We started a little bit later. And we're going to watch a little bit of it. I'm going to find some of it. And I'm looking at this on my phone right now. Apparently in the speech, 
Kamala said, how dare they? Women's rights in America are under attack. We're going to look at that speech. We're going to respond to it. These people are completely losing the point. They're completely missing the point. And Roberts deflecting, then trying to be strong and assert the court's independence is not going to help that. You are the chief justice of the Supreme Court. You ought to have the temerity to have a no-holds-barred, zealous defense of your institution, not a half-witted, milquetoast denial of the truth. And that's precisely what Roberts did. I'm getting mad, man. I, man. Let me calm down. Let's continue. Roberts continued. I have directed the marshal of the court to launch an investigation into the source of this leak. Okay. He continues. We are the court. We at, we at the court are blessed to have a workforce, permanent employees and law clerks alike, intensely loyal to the institution and dedicated to the rule of law. Court employees have an exemplary and important and important tradition of respecting the confidentiality of the judicial process and upholding the trust of the court. Okay, now he's trying to, okay. Now he's trying to run cover. Okay, okay. Proximity. Okay, write this down, guys. <laughs> this is funny. No, it's, it's actually, it's not funny. This is the complete and utter, he's black, he's getting a black eye to the institution right now. So he began his statement by saying, well, this is not the final opinion, so there's really not no need to worry. I'm paraphrasing. That's essentially what he meant. Then he said, well, we're not going to be influenced by this stuff. But the antecedent contradicts the statement. And we know from the laws of logic, if your premise is wrong, your conclusion can't be wrong. If the headwaters of a river are tainted, That'll eventually go downstream and hit the rest of the stream. So he starts with a half-witted, milk toast proclamation, which is not true. Then tries to defend the institution, the institution being that which is fundamentally based on truth, based on first principles, but it has deviated in due time. Then he goes ahead and tries to defend those who work in the institution by appealing to history. Do you guys see what's happening here? If he was making an argument, I would say that he's moving the goalpost. He's not making an argument, so I cannot honestly say that in good faith. I wish I could, because he's jumping around to a lot of different things which don't get to the core of the issue. The core of the issue is that this institution has been butchered and black-eyed over the past 24 hours. And all he can offer are half-witted mistruths, then a milk toast defense of the court's of the court's independence, and then a defense of the tradition of honesty in the midst of lies and deceit. A tradition cannot make up for what is happening in the present. Traditions have to be weighed by how well they set up the test of time empirically. You can't make a statement like that and expect me to view these traditions in a damn vacuum because I can't do that. No person of good conscience can do that. And yet Roberts, he is, man, Roberts is not at all. Our institutions are being ripped down right now. There were people yesterday saying, burn it down in front of the Supreme Court. There are Democratic governors, legislators saying that we're going to fight like hell when the court's just doing its job. And Roberts does not have the temerity to be a zealous defender of his own institution. This is sick, man. man. This, this, is, this, is, this is getting to me, guys. This is not a performance. This is not a gimmick. I am seeing the greatest experiment in individual liberty 
in the history of humanity cater because its leaders want to be nice and indirect and posh and fancy and politically correct. It's a disgrace of the highest, or I should probably say lowest order, because there's nothing in this that speaks of excellence. There's nothing in this. This speaks in reeks of cowardice. See, I haven't even gotten through the article, and I'm already... He continues, this was a singular and egregious breach of that trust that is in a front of the court and the community of public servants who work here. Okay, but there's obviously a culture. This didn't happen in a damn vacuum. I'm not trying to curse guys, but it's just getting to me. This didn't happen in a vacuum. There's obviously a culture that preceded this. And I want to know, in whose office was this culture fomented? I want to know how deep the rabbit hole goes, Mr. Roberts. That's what I want to know. How much does the cookie, cookie crumble? Excuse me. That's what I want to know. That's what I'm trying to figure out. So let's, let's zoom out for a moment. We got a Supreme Court Justice, Chief Supreme Court Justice, who is not giving a full-throated defense of the institution that he serves and is trying to erase the significance of what happened yesterday by appealing to history. Then... And we have this in the backdrop of a revolutionary youth color guard almost who were outside of the Supreme Court yesterday yelling, if we don't get it, burn it down. Then you translate that sentiment into a higher order sentiment coming from Elizabeth Warren who says we need to get rid of the filibuster and ram through an unconstitutional, immoral, illegal, states' rights usurping, anti-federalist decree to legalize abortion across the nation. And this is the sense of the Democratic Party. And this is why Chuck Schumer just scheduled a vote today. Today, he scheduled a vote on that measure for next week. Joe Biden said in his speech that we need to do it too. From the very, this is wickedness in high places, from the very, very highest rungs of this government. We are seeing the absolute butchering of basic foundational principles. If we don't get it, burn it down. Let's break it down. Jesus, help me. Let's, 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 okay, hold on. Let me get, let me, let me come down. I love my country, guys. I care about my nation. I care about our intellectual and moral history. I love my country, guys. I love my country. Okay? So this is, I, this is just, I'm saying this in love. I don't hate anybody, but I don't like people who want to destroy the basic foundational principles of this nation. I don't like them at all. And I especially don't like people, people who equivocate, who speak in platitudes. Oh, oh, I can't stand them, man. I can't stand them. And so now you have congressional Democrats trying to blow up institutional buffers to their power 
<laughs> this is too rich. When, <laughs> this is too much, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is too damn much. You've got, you've got people who are now invoking bodily autonomy and say that is a matter between a woman and her doctor, who are mutilating the adjacent principle, which would also say that in order to ensure that bodily autonomy and self-governance can exist, there has to be institutional barriers to the majority's power, which is what the filibuster is. And yet, they want to blow up the filibuster so the minority has no effective ability to fight back against the encroachments of a majority. This is what democracy looks like. This is exactly what it looks like. This is split screen, splitting image democracy. You go back to Athens, they had the same kind of tactics, just in a different form. Instead of a Congress, Athens had a people's council. And after you were forced to go off and fight in a war you may not want to fight at when you were 18, you would basically go back in the, in the people's council. You'd be one of the people who would vote. This is what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. This is what democracy, say it. This is what, the, because they were chaining that crap yesterday. This is what democracy looks like. They're correct. Democracy looks like blowing up institutional barriers. Democracy looks like tyrannizing a minority by trying to force feed them your, your majority opinion. Democracy looks like completely and utterly shedding institutional protections for certain ideas. Democracy looks like a confusion and a rejection of first principles. Democracy looks like all that kind of stuff. Yes, this is what democracy looks like. This is what it looks like. It's a floating abstraction with no basis in reality. And when it, man, let me stop. All right, let's go to the chat. Let's go to the chat, guys. These people are driving me nuts. Oh, Star Sun. Hey, thank you so much for, dear, for, 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 for joining, my dear friend. I'm sorry you got to see me this way. I'm a mess right now. I'm an absolute mess. <laughs> I'm an absolute mess. Because <sighs> my, my country is being ripped, ripped, ripped apart at the seams. You can't expect a majority opinion to have a consistent to no, I agree. I well okay, hold on. I agree. I entirely agree with you. Totally. Majorities have a bad track record. Totally agree. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. AD says democracy looks like a democratic socialist meeting every yes, 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 yes. So Roberts, we've established that Roberts is not at all defending the institution in a meaningful way. He is instead beating around the bush and he is trying to appease people. And the people he's trying to appease are the very people that are trying to absolutely obliterate the institution that he works that he works for. I, I, I I don't get it. 